I think this is the point where I should confess that I have a new passion in life, and it's house plants. Yeah, house plants, exactly. I used to. It's an absolute, well, it's not an obsession, but this sort of passion yeah. suddenly arose out of nowhere. Yeah, I had yeah. no interest whatsoever, and suddenly there's this fascination. I know. You know Coco as the be Americans be. say, go figure. And if there was, I mean, if there was a motto for non duality, that, I mean, there's lots of things that could be it, but that could be it. Go figure. Mm -hmm. it, go figure, as the Americans say. In other words, it's a mystery. Yeah. <coughs> explain it, try and explain it if you, if you want to, but you won't. No, it was well, you, know, you can come up with a story. You don't need it's to. Just, it's it'll just be a story. A, yeah. Yeah. Out of nothing, everything arises, including sudden fascinations with house plants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you talk to them, I do. <laughs> See me afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be on the video, won't you? I try to be fairly self-revealing in these talks and meetings, but there are certain steps too far. <laughs> I think whether I talk to my housewives or not is one of those steps too far. I'm going to maintain a discreet silence on that one. Me too with the house plants. Sudden fascination. Not the talking bit. See me afterwards. <laughs> but there is something, uh, I mean, going, I think we were talking about this to some degree before, too. There is something about whatever the hell it is that we're talking about, see, which does tend to make the ordinary more fascinating. Mm. And maybe, therefore, the kind of what the mind thinks of as extraordinary as less fascinating, maybe. But certainly the ordinary, the fascination of the ordinary, is often what's reported as almost first being noticed, as in the wonderful, you know, I think it's a wonderful story that Tony was telling years ago about someone who, you know, rang him up and said, wow, it's amazing, I've just been sitting in the garden for half an hour watching an ant crawl over a twig. Mm. Yeah. Makes sense. The ordinary is just magic. Like both. Mm. So it's perception versus mind. <coughs> I mean, thinking's exciting too. I think maybe maybe because it's less problematic here now, so I, I find that exciting. When, it, when the mind's here, and sometimes the mind's not here at all. So I like both. I wouldn't choose just pure silence all the time, to be honest. I quite like the fact that pure silence, then there's a bit of mind. <laughs> I quite like that. Possibly it has to be that way. Not necessarily. Initially, I didn't have any mind. Ah, uh -huh. it was uh -huh. just. Yeah, but then mind just, came back, or mind. No, happened. not came back. I mean, it was just it, be subtle. Maybe I'd get a few thoughts, maybe throughout a day. But mm. no, so I'll get periods of thinking, which I like, and then periods of nothing. Because mm. <coughs> the abs and the absorption is deeper when there's nothing going on. But like go together, I don't know, but. I think right in the beginning when I discovered non-duality, it wasn't that long ago, one and a half years ago, then I would come to these things and think, wow, there's no person there. So that just trying to figure out what someone who's had an awakening or liberation or falling away, how do they operate? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah just an utter combination of a fascination or intrigue. Um, because That's actually, not happening now. Hmm? Because actually there was never a person here, mm -hmm. there was never a person there. Yeah. It's just this, I'm going to use the word illusion rather advisedly, but I'll just mm -hmm. throw it out. That was always the case. But that kind of, I mean, I'm not sure if this is quite what you mean, but for me, yeah, a kind of the story that was in here. Mm -hmm. I mean, again, I've got this long history as a spiritual seeker. And, uh, and they also still carrying that with me when I came across this mm -hmm. with Tony and so forth. You know, and yet a story about you know who that who that was <coughs> sitting in the chair up there giving the talk mm -hmm. or leading the meditation or leading the chant or striking the symbols or whatever it might be. I mean the story was so intense. Mm -hmm. And in a way so lovely. And in another way yeah. so very, very, very misleading. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Projection, it's called yeah. projection. It's, you know, it's what we do okay. until we stop doing it. Mm. Well, we don't stop doing it until it stops. 
The figuring out and the sort of almost calculating, oh, maybe it's going to be like this, maybe I'll have yeah, yeah, yeah. It can be quite intense. Well, it's inevitable for certain minds, certain characters, certain personalities. You know. yeah. But if you get cooked by this... Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's also a complete mystery, that hooking. I mean, this was no interest whatsoever in anything that we're talking about here, anything even remotely related to it, <coughs> until I was in the early 30s. Yeah. And then in a kind of moment of despair and desperation, I handed over a huge cheque to the Transcendental Meditation Movement. And that was it. Well, you were in. Can't explain it. I'm glad I never got into the seeking stuff. Yeah. I'm really glad I did. Well, it was interesting. <laughs> it's colourful and interesting. I got a book out of it. But, I know, yeah. but I just wouldn't. Because it seems like an illness as well when people get stuck and just hooked on YouTube video after video. I mean, it, it, it seems like sad in a way because it's like life you know when you want to live your life and it brings some kind of comfort but it just seems to me like it's healthier than drinking a bottle of wine for sure but it's i don't know people do get stuck there as well and i think that's quite sad i, don't know. I just want to be all and end all it's really hard to think back though like you know What do you need this for? Like, really? But seeking can take many forms. A person might be seeking Unconscious. completion, validation, money for the same reason, women, or whatever. Well, that kind of seeking, yeah. Well, well, that, seeking can take, you know. Yeah, but it's not like afterwards you're not, you know, you might be seeking for the one or. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And some people get conditioned after that. I've, I've heard people talk about, oh, you know, I'm not, no longer looking for the one because I found the one. Oh, it's not bullshit, you know. <laughs> it's like normal instincts, aren't they? Like, mm -hmm. yeah. seeking for whatever, like, yeah. I mean, because it's all commonly said that all behavior is a form of seeking, like you're saying, shopping, and mm. to, to ease, give you that sense of wholeness for a minute. I mean, to alleviate the sort of existential something, whatever that might be, existential angst or dread or something, incom yeah. incompleteness, or there's a quest to alleviate something, yeah. a pre existing something inside, imaginary something inside. It's not like you don't get a thrill when you, I don't know, buy something like that. I don't know. So there are no knowledge of non-duality at all before, or did you, did you have some kind of interest in spirituality, or was it just completely out of the blue? A couple of months I was kind of into it, but most weeks are record totally, and, um, so I didn't really get it. And then years ago I'd read Christian, I didn't put two and two together, and, like, but I read Jiddu, but Jiddu doesn't really talk about this, he, he talks more about the mind. Well, that's that's what I gleaned from it. It was more like no mind state. He was obviously in a no mind state because, I don't know, it's just. Well, he was awake, obviously, but the way he, the way he spoke. She was so slowly. straight. <laughs> 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 Me, the only thing that mattered and made the difference was the love because it was just so thick and so just, you know, everything's just so still. I don't know. I wasn't going around thinking about me or not me, but I was aware in the, the, the actual, kind of there was a big sort of bang moment where it felt like, oh, like the, there was a kind of disappearance, in a way it like felt like a loss of some sort, 
and nothing to grab hold of. And I didn't like that initially. There's something I've gotten used to, which is like this sense of no, no location, which is kind of odd, but I quite like it because it does feel like I feel like a kind of mist. It sounds really unhealthy. <laughs> It does seem to be the seeing of love that puts an end to seeking, puts an end to that energy. Yeah. yeah I mean, I've mean, right. written a lot and talked a lot about despair. You know, seeing, you know, an initial opening can quite often be this seeing of emptiness. You know, there's no one here and there's nothing there and it's all empty. And often that produces despair, which I've often said isn't nearly as bad as it sounds actually, but never mind that. But it's the seeing of the it's the seeing of the love, the fullness, whatever you want to call it, that seems to stop the seeking. <coughs> seems right. to end there. That's right. So seeking and desire into wine girls is not the same. Say again. Seeking and desire are they similar? I wouldn't say so. No, I mean, no. I mean, I, I think the seeking I'm talking about is much more fundamental than for what I would use the word desire for. Yeah. So desire may continue, but seeking mm. without, seeking, I can't say seeking within, that is the rule, but seeking tends to end when the fullness of this is seen. But desire may very well continue. It may increase, it may simply change, it may become a desire for different, you know. Desire can be strong still. And sometimes it seems very transpersonal as well, it's really oh God, bizarre, yes. like, yeah. you find yourself doing something that doesn't make any sense, but it's so com <laughs> compelling, and I've had that recently a few times, but it's just, yeah, just following that, um, yeah. yeah. There's a lot of spiritual stuff, seems to be anti-desire from what I... Say again? Comes to be like anti-desire, you should desire... What is? Well, spiritual stuff already. Oh, yeah, yeah. You shouldn't desire yeah, definitely. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's healthy to have desire. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to be desireless. I've run a mile from any, any teaching that says anything like that. You know, in, in, in therapy speak, they talk about um, masturbation and hardening of the alters. You know, get rid of the must and the alters and the shoulds. Because they're mostly crap. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I just get out of the room fast, any spiritual teacher who, who's suggesting that, and there are a lot who do. Mm. And there's a lot of tradition that does as well. Mm. Yeah. yeah, desire, if, when it's very powerful, it can sometimes feel like it has absolutely a real transpersonal energy to it. And I know that's, yeah, yeah, that's within the story of this blah, 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 but absolutely, that's... Mm. Kind of an ex the experience, it can be the experience. It's in the Kundalini literature as well that yeah. really strong desires. I mean, which obviously you've got to be cautious about too because it can, it doesn't always lead to a good place, but it, sometimes it really makes sense. It's like synchronicities and weird stuff that can occur at different periods in your life, cut it. <coughs> The intensity of all or any experience can increase, and somebody again, I can't remember who it was, said this is like living life with the blinkers off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but maybe being, I suppose, I suppose I had a hell of a lot more desire in me before this. Yeah, it was. <laughs> it was. I mean, it's like, I desire a thing or something, it was just, yeah, I was just kind of, maybe a bit addicted. <coughs> I'm going maybe back. physical desire, maybe. Going back to what I was saying before, you know, neurosis dampens down every energy. Yeah. And dampens down the energy of desire. So whatever. Whatever degree of neurotic energy is kind of goes. Maybe desire is likely to be. I don't want to say increase. I just want to say like felt more in its kind of purity, sure. rather than dulled down by some neurotic voice in the head or some neurotic feeling in the body. I think initially desire went for me 
when I'm thinking about it, because I've mentioned that before, with this, you know, I used to get excited about, you know, celebrity parties and stuff, and I was invited to some film premiere, and it was meeting all these people, blah, blah, blah. I didn't go, and annoyed me, like, you know. And I was just, like, just sitting in the bliss, and like, wow. I wish I would have had if I'd gone out anyway, but it was just nicer to sit where I was. So there was a complete letting go for a while of any of that kind of, I suppose, called, called metaphysical desire, like, um, yeah, that went. But, so... Yeah, and desire for intrigue, and not everybody's got that. I had that, you know. No, sorry, intrigue? Intrigue, you know, like just getting involved in kind of dramas and okay. the excitements, and well, that seemed to be sort of, thank God that was gone, because it's just I mean, kind of madness, really. The desire for drama. I mean, there's nothing wrong with a little bit of drama in your life <laughs> once in a while. Like, there's not, not to say that, but like, I think I was seeking a lot of that, got quite addicted to that, and that fell away. And it was relief, because that, yeah, just, <coughs> just constantly going out, distract yourself from, I guess, all the other stuff you don't want to look at. Spiritual desire. You know, one of the one of the indicators that there may have been an awakening may be if you see somebody coming out of their house and tottering towards the Oxfam shop with a huge box full of spiritual books. <coughs> so that desire it doesn't have to die, obviously, but it's pretty common that it does. Yeah. Sexual desire might go up, you know, with your very mind based as well. <coughs> so, yeah. so. By the way, I can't remember who we put in charge of timekeeping, but you're doing a really awful job. It's over time. Um, no one was in charge. I'm happy enough, but I just, I just I noticed. Just past five. <laughs> so we're, doing, I think we're all over time. Now. It's because we're enjoying ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> No, thank you guys. It's been brilliant today. Oh, glad you enjoyed it. Yeah. Okay. Well, that seems to have brought you to a close. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so thank you. Oh, yeah, thanks, thanks for coming, everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.